We are delighted to have David Eng, an alum of YA Visions, returning to interview one of our favorite guests, author Ned Bizzini. Now, let's go to the Matuchin Library and turn it over to David. I'm thrilled to be back with YA Visions today for the opportunity to talk once again with Ned Bizzini, author of three great novels, uh, Teen Angst, Nah, Be More Chill, and It's Kind of a Funny Story. Now, when I spoke with Ned five years ago, he had just finished writing It's Kind of a Funny Story. Here's a clip from that interview. You've written one book before this, yes. right? And you have plans for a next uh, third book? Yes, I do. I finished my third book very recently, mm -hmm. and it's going to be coming out in spring 2006, and it's called It's Kind of a Funny Story. It's not a sequel to Be More Chill. It's a new narrative, uh, but it's something I'm really proud of. Can you tell us any bits about the plot? Or, uh... Sure, sure. It's Kind of a Funny Story is about a teenage uh, kid who gets really, really pressured by the work he has to do in high school. He goes to an ultra-competitive high school that's mm. loosely based on Stuyvesant, where I went, but is called Executive Pre-Professional <laughs> High School. And he gets so stressed out that he gets, he gets depressed. He gets clinically depressed. And the book traces his journey for five days in the psych hospital uh, that, he, that he freaks out wow. and checks himself into. And he meets all these characters there who give him kind of a new perspective on life, and he comes out with a different view of what's really important. So it's in some ways a more serious than Be More Chill, but it keeps all the humor because we are in a psych hospital. We have people <laughs> who are afraid that gravity is going to flip and they'll fall off the <laughs> top of the earth and all sorts of stuff like that. So it's coming out next year. Sounds good. What really makes the, the book stand out, in my opinion, uh, is the fact that it's so accessible in its language and that it, it's it's really able to clearly expe express the uh, kind of subjective behavior, the introspection of uh, Craig Gilner, the narrator, main character, uh, in a way that readers really can easily grasp. Because of this, readers uh, have been able to really follow along with Craig as he transitions from his highs to his lows. And I mean, trust me, the, there, are, there, are, there are extremes on both ends, making them really all the more powerful by, by comparison. Uh, recently, it's kind of a funny story, the book was nominated for the Garden State Book Award uh, by New Jersey librarians and young adult readers. And it's kind of a funny story, the film adaptation has just been released by Focus Films as a major motion picture starring Keir Gilchrist, Zach Galifianakis, and Emma Roberts. Here's a clip from that. How you doing? You got a cigarette? No, sorry. What's wrong with you? I just don't smoke. No, I mean, why are you in an ER at 5 o'clock on a Sunday morning? Well, um, I guess there's just been a lot going on in my, in my, my mind lately. Now Ned Vizzini has returned to Metuchen, New Jersey, uh, location of his second novel, to give a talk called How Not to Go Crazy in High School. I'm pleased to reintroduce Ned Vizzini to our YA Visions audience. Welcome back, Ned. Thanks. First of all, congratulations on the new film. Uh, now, I guess this is kind of a, a loaded question for authors who have their books adapted to films, but how did you think it turned out? I loved it. I mean, I really had a... It's very rare that... Uh, movie captures the tone of the book, and I think that the movie really captured the tone of the book. One of one of the 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 differences, though, that that has been brought to my attention is the kind of I guess some of the the backstory for Craig, the main character, right, uh, was was left out. Particularly, there was there was a lot of drug usage mentions in the, in, the, in the book and kind of left out in the film. Any particular thought behind that? That's one of the consequences of the fact that you can get away with a lot in young adult literature that she can't in a PG-13 movie. Uh, it's just, I have tremendous freedom to write about what I want to write about in books for young adults. That's something that over the last 10 years has really opened up. And you can write about self-mutilation and sexual abuse and drug use. And when you start bringing those things into the film world, 
uh, you get an R rating, and the movie's PG-13, so there were some things that really had to be changed in order to make sure that that rating was there. And it's strange, because, I mean, once you hit 13 and up, you're kind of, you're, you're bordering on the same demographic, the same kind of age of audience that you're, that you're trying to reach. It's very odd that uh, you can do so much in young adult literature, and you can't do so much in young adult movies, if that's what you want to consider a PG-13 right. movie. Uh, but as long as the young adult literature world remains open, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Any uh, particular stories from production that, that you thought were, that stood out? Oh, the sure. Yeah. There was a lot of fun. And once Galifianakis showed up, the headphones got very scarce because everybody wanted to hear what he was going to do. And I think as a stand-up comedian, he came in with a lot of jokes in his back pocket and a lot of scenes in the movie, like the scene where he talks about how his, his shirt and how it smells bad. Every time they did a, uh, a take of that scene, he would say a different funny thing that his shirt smelled like. And you know, one of those lines ended up in the movie, uh, but there are a ton more. Maybe we'll see some of those extra lines in the deleted scenes or something when the DVD comes out. That's definitely a possibility. <laughs> Uh, now, when we last talked, we were talking about Be More Chill. Yeah. Uh, and that was a book, when we were discussing kind of your, the thoughts went behind it, it drew a lot from your own experiences right. uh, in high school. It's kind of a funny story. It came a, a lot from, again, from your experiences, your, your response right. to a lot of the stressors coming uh, out of high school. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about that? I spent a very intense week in a psych hospital when I was in my early 20s, uh, those pressures for me were really contingent upon like writing a new book. I was supposed to write a book and I was working on this book and it wasn't working out and uh, I just started really spiraling down because I was convinced that my life was over if I wasn't going to write this book. And um, I ended up in a hospital for a week, and when I got out of the hospital, I started writing about it, but I fictionalized my experiences and I gave them to a teenager as opposed to uh, me. One of the uh, other other stressors around the age group, something that's been, I guess, all over the media lately, mm. talks of uh, bullying, sp cyber bullying specifically in this day and age, uh, really just kind of one story after another showing, showing up in the air. What, what, are your, what are your thoughts? I don't feel qualified to speak about cyberbullying specifically or bullying. Uh, I feel qualified to speak from the point of view of help for people who are in mental distress, right? Because that's what it's kind of a funny story is about. And one thing that I think would be, maybe the news cycles would be slightly different if we really drummed into people's heads. Like if you're feeling suicidal and you're feeling like you really are gonna go and jump off a bridge or hang yourself, you should call the suicide hotline because uh, when you call the suicide hotline, you're immediately on the phone with someone very calm and professional who knows what they're doing and without even realizing it, if you're like me, you'll be quietly convinced that you have to leave and go to a hospital. The easy thing is 1-800-SUICIDE is a, that's a national hotline. So it's very easy to remember because it's seven letters. This is something I talk about in the book. It's, it's very, very convenient. It's, it's very convenient that it's seven letters. It's a great show. It's kind of a funny story. Sounds great, doesn't it, Nishla? Absolutely. You know, Avani, I want to study psychology in college. And although the book is very entertaining, I think I can learn about the very serious subject of teen suicide. I'm going to see if the DVD of the film has been released. Speaking of college, we're both going to be going there before long. I know, and we'll have to be replaced here. No way. We aren't irreplaceable, aren't we? If you say so, Avani. Anyway, if you are between the ages of 13 and 18 and would like to join the cast of YA Visions and become stars like us, <laughs> please look for the cr information shown in the credits. I think that it's time, Nishla. Bye. Bye.